Hi, and thank you for visiting my channel. For more information, kindly subscribe and follow. Now let's get started. Paul Heyman has sent a message directed at Roman Reigns on social media. A couple of weeks ago on SmackDown, the original tribal chief was put through the announcer's table by Solo Sokoa and his stablemates. Amid Reigns' absence, Heyman has been loyal to the man he still acknowledges as the tribal chief. Following WrestleMania XL, Sokoa declared himself the new tribal chief. However, Heyman refused to acknowledge the 31-year-old and was powerbombed through the announcer's table. On his Instagram story, Heyman reshared the clip of him and Reigns sharing a moment of respect after the OTC's historic title reign ended. The Hall of Famers sent a forward message acknowledging Reigns. At the SummerSlam Premium Live event, Reigns returned to WWE for the first time since losing the undisputed WWE Championship to Cody Rhodes. After costing Sokoa his title match against the American Nightmare, Reigns set his sights on the Ula Fala but has been unable to regain it from his former enforcer. Jim Cornette believes WWE could save Paul Heyman's return for the right moment according to Jim Cornette. The Bloodline storyline doesn't need Paul Heyman at the moment. On the experience, Cornette explained that Heyman's return could be saved for the future. He said, they don't even need him right now. That's the great part about it. I'm not trying to slough Paul off. I'm saying that's the great thing is that they don't even need him now. They can save it for whenever they want, when they do. Since returning at SummerSlam, Reigns has been battling the bloodline all by himself. With Jimmy USO sidelined with an injury, the former undisputed WWE champion currently has no allies on the blue brand in his battle against Solo Sokoa, Jacob Fatu, Tama Tonga, and Tambiloa. Paul Heyman had always been a man of carefully chosen words. The wrestling world was accustomed to his eloquence, his ability to weave narratives that left fans on the edge of their seats. But on this particular day, he chose to speak with an economy of language that was uncharacteristic, yet chillingly effective. The aftermath of the Bloodline's betrayal of Roman Reigns was still reverberating throughout the WWE universe. Just days earlier, the unthinkable had happened. Roman Reigns, the once unstoppable tribal chief, had been brutally taken out by the very family he had led to dominance. The image of Solo Sokoa and Jimmy and Jey Uso standing over a fallen Reigns had left fans in shock, questioning everything they thought they knew about the bloodline. In the days that followed, speculation ran rampant. What had driven the bloodline to turn on their leader? What would become of Roman Reigns? And most importantly, where did Paul Heyman stand in all of this? Heyman had been conspicuously silent since the shocking events on SmackDown. For a man who thrived on being in the spotlight, his absence was telling. The WWE Universe had grown used to seeing Heyman by Roman's side, his devious mind always working, always scheming. But now, he was nowhere to be found. That all changed when Paul Heyman broke his silence with a cryptic tweet. It wasn't a long, drawn-out statement, nor was it a detailed explanation of what had transpired. Instead, Heyman posted just four words that sent shockwaves through the wrestling world. It was always business. The tweet, simple yet loaded with meaning, instantly went viral. Fans and analysts alike began dissecting those four words, trying to decipher their true intent. Had Heyman been orchestrating this betrayal all along? Was he still aligned with the bloodline, or was he hinting at a new direction, one where business interests superseded loyalty? Backstage, the atmosphere was tense. Wrestlers and crew members whispered amongst themselves, wondering what Heyman's next move would be. The Usos and Solo Sokoa had been elusive, refusing to give any interviews or statements. It was clear they had made their choice, but the question remained, where did Heyman fit into their plans? Roman Reigns was still recovering from the brutal attack. The tribal chief, who had once seemed invincible, was now vulnerable. There were rumors that he might not return to WWE anytime soon, leaving a power vacuum that many were eager to fill. Some speculated that Heyman, ever the opportunist, was already aligning himself with the next big thing in WWE, ready to discard Reigns as easily as he had discarded others in the past. 
Meanwhile, the WWE universe was left in a state of uncertainty. Fans had always known Heyman as a master manipulator, someone who could twist any situation to his advantage. But this time, his motives were even more obscure. What did he mean by it was always business? Was he simply justifying the betrayal, or was there a deeper, more sinister plot at play? As the days passed, the tension only grew. WWE programming became a minefield of speculation and anticipation. Would Roman Reigns make a shocking return? Would Heyman reveal his true allegiances? And what role would the bloodline play in the future of WWE? Behind the scenes, Heyman remained tight-lipped. Those who knew him best understood that his silence was strategic. Heyman was always ten steps ahead, and this time was no different. The truth was that Heyman had been preparing for this moment for a long time. The seeds of Reigns' downfall had been planted months ago, and now they had finally borne fruit. Heyman's forward message was a reminder that in the world of WWE, nothing was ever personal, it was always about business. Loyalty was a currency that could be traded, alliances could be formed and broken, all in the name of advancing one's career. And Paul Heyman was a master at playing the game. But there was more to Heyman's plan than met the eye. While the WWE universe focused on the bloodline's betrayal, Heyman was already plotting his next move. He knew that Roman Reigns' absence would leave a void, one that needed to be filled by someone with the same ruthless ambition. And Heyman had his sights set on a new client, someone who could carry the torch and lead WWE into its next era of dominance. In the weeks that followed, Heyman began making subtle moves behind the scenes. He met with key figures in WWE, negotiating, strategizing, always with an eye on the future. He was biding his time, waiting for the right moment to strike. Then, on an episode of SmackDown, Heyman finally revealed his hand. Standing in the middle of the ring, microphone in hand, he addressed the WWE Universe. Ladies and gentlemen, he began, his voice calm and measured, everything I do is for the betterment of this business. Roman Reigns was a chapter in the story, but the book is far from over. And now, I'm about to introduce you to the next chapter. The crowd buzzed with anticipation as Heyman turned to the entrance ramp. The lights dimmed, and a familiar theme song blared through the arena speakers. The crowd erupted in a mix of cheers and boos as the new client emerged from the backstage area, a menacing figure who had been biding his time, waiting for the right moment to seize power. As the new client walked down the ramp, Heyman's words echoed in the minds of everyone watching. It was always business. It was a cold reminder that in the world of WWE, alliances were fleeting, and the only thing that truly mattered was staying on top. With Roman Reigns out of the picture, the stage was set for a new era of dominance, one that would be defined by Paul Heyman's latest creation. The WWE universe had been warned, Heyman was always in control, and this time, he was about to change the game once again.